Rad. So let's start with Jay Radha Madhava. Jay Radha Madhava. Jay Kunja Vihari. Jay Radha Madhava. Jay Kunja Vihari. Jay Gopi Janavalabha. Jaya Giri Varadhari, Jaya Giri Varadhari. Yashoda Nandana Vraja Jana Ranjana. Yashoda Nandana Vraja Jana Ranjana. Chamuna Tira Vanachari. Chamuna Tira Chari Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Vihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jaya Radha Radha Nata Radha Radha Nata Radhe. Jai Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radhe Jai Radha Shama Sundar Radha Shama Sundar Radhe Nitai Gaura Haribo 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 Jai Jai Prabhupada 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 ki jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Pivracharya. A Sutta Sala. Shila Ezi Bhakti Ranta Swami Prabhupada ki jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Pivracharya. A Sutta Sala. Shila Bhakti Sansa Saraswati Maharaj ki jai. Anantikoti Vaishnava ki jai. Namacharya Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Chai Prem Sarka Hoki Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Chananda Shri Arvetika Dada Shri Sari Gaurabhata Vrindiki Chai 
Shishi Radh Radhanath ki jai, Shiman Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shigiri Raj Gurdhan ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Go Premanandi Hari, All glories to assemble devotees, Hare Krishna, All glories to assemble devotees, Hare Krishna, All glories to assemble devotees, Hare Krishna, All glories to Shishi Guru and Shri Gauranga, All glories to Shila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna dear devotees so today we're going to be reading from the light of the Bhagavat and carrying on with our series um, and we today we're going to do uh, and text 19, and it goes as follows. A crane stands on the edge of a pond that is always disturbed by flowing water, mud, and stones. The crane is like a householder who is disturbed in the shelter of his home, but who, because of too much attachment, does not want to change his position. So um, the purport is as follows. The forgetful householder life of the conditioned soul is a soul-killing dark well. This is the opinion of Sri Prahlad Maharaj, the celebrated devotee of the Lord. Too much attachment for hearth and home is never recommended by a self-realized soul. Therefore, the span of human life should be methodically divided. The first stage is called the Brahmacharya Ashram or the order of life in childhood when the man is to be trained uh, in the ultimate goal of life. The next stage is the Grihastha Ashram in which the man is trained to enter into the transcendence. The, then comes the Vanapras Ashram the preliminary stage of renounced life. The last stage recommended in the sannyas order is the sannyas order or the renounced order of life. In this way, one accepts a gradual process of spiritual activities for the ultimate goal of liberation. Unfortunately, for want of sufficient culture of the human spirit, no one wants to give up the householder life even though it is full of pinpricks and mud. And those who are too attached amidst the pinpricks of muddy household life are compared to the cranes that stand on the bank of the river for some sense enjoyment, despite all the inconveniences there. We should always remember that society, friendship and love we are supposed to enjoy in family life are only shadow representations of the real society, friendship and love reciprocated in the kingdom of God. There is no reality in the conditioned life of material existence, but because of our ignorance, we are attached to the mirage. The idea of society, friendship and love is not at all false, but the place where we search for it is false. We have to give up this false position and rise to the reality. That should be the aim of life. And that is the result of cultivating the human spirit. Unfortunately, we want, for want of sufficient culture of this spirit, the materialistic man always sticks to the false place in spite of all its turmoils. It is said that a man should give up the order of household life at the age of 50. But in this era of ignorance, even an old man wants to rejuvenate his bodily functions, but on artificial, put on artificial teeth and make a pretense of youthful life, even on the verge of death. Crane-like politicians especially are too much attached to the false prestige of position and rank so they always seek re-election, even at the fag end of life. 
there are some of the some these are some of the symptoms of an uncultured life so before i speak i'll just say some prayers om gyanati mirandasya yananjana shalakaya chashur militam yena tasme shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhistam sapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamaya dadati swapadantika he krishna karuna sindhu dina bandhu chakapate gopesh gopika kanta radha kanta nasute tapta kanchan gaurangi radhe brindavaneshri vrishbhanu sute devi pranamami Vanchikalpatru Pesha Kripasindu Pavicha Patitanam Pavini Pyo Vaishnava Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadatha Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So dear devotees, um, just to back up this analogy, I'm going to read from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, uh, text, uh, chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge, text 26. Shotra Driandriani Shin Anye Samya Magishu Juvati Subtadin Versayan Anye Indraya Gishu Juvati. Some, the unadulterated brahmacharis, sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of mental control, and others. The regulated householders sacrifice the object of the senses in the fire of the senses. So there's a small purport here by Srila Prabhupada. We'll read that. The members of the four divisions of human life, namely Brahmachari, the Grihastha, Vandapras, and Sannyasi, are all meant to become perfect yogis or transcendentalists, since human life is not meant for enjoying sense gratification like the animals. The four orders of human life are so arranged that one may become perfect in spiritual life. The brahmacharis or the students under the care of a bona fide spiritual master control the mind by abstaining from sense gratification. A brahmachari hears only words concerning uh, Krishna consciousness. Hearing is the basic principle for understanding and therefore, the pure brahmachari engages fully in Hare Nama Sankirtanam, uh, chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. He restrains himself from the vibrations of material sound, and his hearing is engaged in the transcendental sound vibration of the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Similarly, the householders who have some license for sense gratification performs such acts with a great restraint. Sex life, intoxication, and meat eating are general tendencies of the human society, but a regulated householder does not indulge in unrestricted sex life and other sense gratification. Marriage on the principles of religion um, and the principle of religious life is therefore current in all civilized human society because life is also a kind of yagya because the restricted householder sacrifices his general tendency towards sense gratification for higher transcendental life. So having read that, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we see in this um, verse and purport and the analogy of uh, 
an, an analogy 19 of the light of the Bhagavad is um, aiming or the is talking about um, the brahmachari, grihasa and vanapras uh, and sannyas life basically and how we should mold our lives so much so that it um, the, the central figure is Krishna, right? So uh, spiritual life can be practiced in any ashram, whether it be brahmachari, grihasa, vanapras or sannyas. It's very easy to follow uh, the Krishna conscious uh, in these ashrams. However, the Grihasa ashram is a little difficult. So unless you have your mind and in the right place, uh, it's going to be a bit tough. Firstly, you have to be very Krishna conscious. Easier said than done, right? Yes, so if we look at it from a Krishna conscious perspective, then it's very easy we should look at it at, as, as our property, as Krishna's, right? Our property as Krishna's property, our wife as Krishna's. She has been sent to us for safekeeping and assisting her to advance in Krishna consciousness. Our children also have been uh, loaned to us for the time being meaning Krishna has given them to us as per our desire, because we desired them. So Krishna has given them to us, right? our, our kids. And uh, we will have to take care of them, right? Knowing that uh, these kids belong to Krishna and I sh should take the best care that I can possibly uh, have, you know, and whatever is available to me, I should take care of them. So it could be like for maybe 50 years, 20 years, a few hours from now, everything, you know, in this material world is limited. So we never know how long Krishna has given us um, these um, children for this wife for. So, you know, we should take and protect them to the best of our ability. Uh, and also husband, you know. <laughs> So we're not, we won't leave the husbands aside. So yes, so um, the wife should take care of the husband and children and the husband should take care of the wife as well. So uh, we need to make good use of the time allotted to us, right? Uh, in raising the kids, see to the material and spiritual welfare of our spouse and kids so that, so we have a huge responsibility on our hands. Right? Sometimes devotees also behave like materialists and engage in unrestricted sense pleasure. But we need to get out of that mentality or Krishna will send us some reminders and it won't be pleasant. The more we try to engage separately from Krishna, right? the more reminders Krishna will send to us in the form of adversities, then we blame everything on Krishna and we don't, do not take any blame for ourselves, no. So why is this? Because the human mind is like that, it's conditioned in that way. So um, we need to uh, satisfy Krishna's senses and not my senses, right? So we so much in, engrossed in indulging in our sense gratification that we forget about Krishna. So we need to satisfy Krishna's senses. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevana, Bhakti, Uchate. We need to satisfy Krishna's senses. So dear devotees, we need to be very, very determined in order to do this. Because Maya is very strong and she's waiting, just, she's just waiting behind Krishna. As soon as you forget Krishna, she's there to pounce on you. So we should take this into consideration and try to be very Krishna conscious or think of Krishna 24 seven. It also works vice versa. The wife should assist the husband and children in Grihastha life, right? The husband uh, should rise early in the morning and perform puja and chant his rounds. And this will inspire the wife and children. The wife should chant her rounds and cook and ask children or her husband to offer the boga to Krishna. So in this way, you know, the chores 
are shared um, equally between the family members. And um, we should have the mindset that this is Krishna's house. It is a temple. And this way, everyone uh, knows what is to be done and will do it. And in that way, there'll be peace in the family. We find nowadays that, uh, you know, over trivial things, there's a big fight. So, um, and this is the nature of this age, right? Uh, this Kali Yuga is full of hypocrisy and quarrel at every small thing, there's a quarrel. So we should uh, take this into consideration and uh, play our parts in order to please Krishna. The children, the husband, the wife should all get together and serve Krishna in this way. And the Lord will be very pleased. And in that way, he will please you as well. So the leader of the family should chalk our duties for each one. And each one should adhere to their duties, chant their rounds together. In this way, you have devotee association, right? Read Srimad Bhagavatam, read Bhagavad Gita, and you know, discuss. If you don't know any of you, if you are having doubts about anything, you can always consult uh, the temple, the devotees, the gu guru, right? So in this way, you will come to an understanding. Uh, you can also come together and come to this temple and do service at the temple. Right? So this is ideal Grihasa life. So um, we shouldn't behave like Grihamedis or sense enjoyers, right? It is, I know in the Grihasa Ashram, it's very, very difficult, you know, because you are always there and material nature is, you know, glaring at you all the time. So it is very, very difficult to actually be Krishna conscious in, in an environment outside the temple, but uh, we should actually um, uh, take uh, cognizance of this and in this way we can you know apply our minds and our hearts to Krishna so that we can be more Krishna conscious right uh, the uh, Grihamedis they think like this eat sleep and be merry right for tomorrow we don't know what will happen but the devotees they know that this material world is a you know there is danger at every step Padam uh, yeah Padam uh, what, how, it, how does the verse go? Um, you know, at every step there is danger. So in this way, the devotees know and they should take responsibility for uh, this movement as well, for Krishna consciousness, for this movement. And how they can take responsibility is, you know, try to make advancement themselves and try to make others advance in Krishna consciousness, or try, try to bring other people to Krishna consciousness. The, the Grihastas have a very important duty to perform in that they need to assist the other orders of life in their ashram. How so? By donating some portion of their income every month to the temple. Uh, so we find that in any other religious organization, this is a must. Uh, you know, they have to give some tie to the to the church or to the pastor like this in Christianity. So they need to give something, right? But in Krishna consciousness, we don't make this compulsory. We don't stipulate because bhakti is not forced. It has to come from the heart naturally, right? So uh, the brahmacharis and the brahmacharinis also have their duties, like deity worship, uh, studying the scriptures and imparting that knowledge. The vanaprastas um, are the ones who are trying uh, after the age of 50 to give up household life and dedicate himself fully to Krishna, right? Uh, previously, in previous ages, they would leave home and go to the forest to meditate. But this process is not recommended in this age. So what you can do after the age of 50 is join the temple and assist in the preaching mission with all your heart and soul. So in this way, um, you know, there's uh, different ages are recommended, right? 
like we read in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, you know, uh, from childhood to 25, or oh, I'm not sure if it's specified here, but from childhood to 25, we should uh, practice brahmacharya life. From 25 to 50, grihastha life. 50 onwards is vanaprast and take sannyas. So this is how it's broken down. But we don't find many devotees doing that, right? So uh, it's recommended in scripture that we do this for our own spiritual upliftment. Uh, well, the sannyasis are already in the renounced order of life and he travels and preach. He accepts disciples also, which means he's taking on more karma, the karma of his disciples, right? And he's enlightening others in Krishna consciousness. Wherever he go, he preaches about Krishna. So on a big scale, like holding festivals or seminars or, you know, different courses like this. So, so everyone has a role to, pr to play in Krishna consciousness. We, we see that Srila Prabhupada has designed Krishna consciousness so ingeniously that even the grihastas can be a grihasta can be a sannyasi by following the four regulative principles strictly, right? All are meant to distribute transcendental knowledge by the means of book distribution, preaching, holding festivals, and so on. So, you know, you cannot say that, you know, you cannot uh, do all of these things. Prabhupada has recommended that we do this. And from time to time, you know, like now the book marathon is coming on, so coming up, so we need to engage in the book marathon. If you cannot go to go out and, uh, you know, uh, directly preach, you can give some Lakshmi towards uh, book sponsorships or, you know, towards uh, the propagation of uh, these books, right, which are distributed far and wide. So like that, uh, this is a very important activity and we Prabhupada called it the, the summer book marathon or the Christmas marathon right, in the West. We see that, um, yeah, so, um, and all of us should learn to preach and should do deity worship, right? Uh, deity worship is basically meant uh, when you are second initiated. So that's very nice. We should try to rise above the modes of nature and take initiation. First step is to take initiation. And second step is get your second initiation and you know, thereby engage in deity worship. Deity worship at the temple or deity worship at home, you know, either place. So in this way, we can make advancement in Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada gave us deity worship in, you know, in order to become Brahmanical, because when you engage in deity service, you have to be very Brahmanical in that. You must know certain mantras, you know, you just don't go stand there and turn the arti to the, to the you know, to wave your, your hand to the deity. No, you have to chant mantras while you are worshiping the deities. Everything that you do, offering food, every mudra, every uh, action that you, you know, that you do on the altar, is um, mantras, you have to engage in mantras. And also uh, cleanliness is very important, right? Uh, so, so these two things are there for a Brahmin to be very clean and to always be reciting mantras and to enlighten other people about Krishna consciousness. So these things are there. You know, and Prabhupada has given us all the opportunity to do the, to do these um, activities. Uh, just for myself, I'll just relate uh, some incidents that when I first, um, not when I first joined Krishna Consciousness, but uh, later on, uh, it was book. I was I joined the, the Namahata, and it was book marathon time, and I was working. You know, I like. I'd leave home six in the morning and come back six at night and no time. So the Namahata leader said, right, I'm giving you all books to distribute and I don't want the books back. I want the money. So I said, oh my God, like, how am I going to do this? 
you know so i said um well maybe i have to, i just have to pray to prabhat because i don't know how i'm going to do this and we all got the books and you know what to do so i sincerely tried i sincerely prayed to prabhat what should i do what should i do and prabhat gave me the answers like during my lunch break i used to go and distribute books right in my karmi clothes and um, during the mornings i had one hour so i used to go in the morning one hour and then during my lunch break one hour and lo and behold all my books were sold and i was so excited and i never stopped distributing books from there from then on i always you know distributed books up till today so yes yeah, so um, you know we should take so that was my, my first engagement right in krishna consciousness um so we all have the opportunity to make it in this lifetime but what's holding us back what's holding us back is our lazy is our laziness and our attachments to this material world once a disciple asked shila prabhat or asked uh, once a disciple asked his spiritual master please help me so i can be free from material attachments so the spiritual master he got up he went to the tree and he hugged the tree very tight and he shouted leave me tree leave me leave me leave me so the disciple was puzzled and thought like what's going on with my spiritual master right so he said gurudev uh maybe you should uh, release your grip from the tree then you know you'll be fine that's all you have to do is just release your grip and so the the spiritual master he released his grip from the tree and he said so that's exactly what i am demonstrating to you right just let go of material attachments and you will be fine so uh, i thought this was a very apt um uh, analogy or a, you know a story to relate so to make you understand what's holding us back this these attachments so we just need to release these attachments right and uh, we see in the story of puranjana in the shrimad bhagavatam how attached uh, he was to her and home always engaging in sense gratification so much so that uh, he was attached to his wife in and he's in his next life he became a woman so uh in the shrimad bhagavatam 425 25 there is a verse that goes like this puranjana the hero became attracted by the eyebrows and smiling face of the very beautiful girl and was immediately pierced by the arrows of lusty desires when she smiled shyly she looked very beautiful to puranjana who although a hero could not refrain from addressing her so i want the purport is quite long i won't read the whole purport but i'll just give you a gist of the purport right so prabhat says that the living entity is a hero right and he's a hero in two ways one he becomes a victim to the illusory energy or he could be a ghost swami the master of his senses right so there's two ways you can become a hero godas right or ghost swami become the master of your senses which is ghost swami or godas become the servant of your senses shila prabhat says that material activities are false heroic acts restraining them is heroism right when you restrain your senses then you're a hero number 1 however great a hero in this material world is uh, he can immediately be conquered by a lump of flesh and bones known as breast of a woman he gives example of antony and cleopatra and bajiro who became victims of women and was defeated shila prabhat says that previously uh, the politicians used to uh, employ beautiful girls and inject poison into their body from the very beginning of their lives until they became immune to poison so much so that just by kissing 
the person, they would kill him. So because of his weakness, the living entity becomes victims to his to illusion, to the illusory energy. The living entity becomes the living entity's biggest downfall is the opposite sex in the material world. So this goes vice versa for men and women to control their senses and not become victims of uh, the illusory energy. And as I said previously, that if you're in household life, you need to restrain your senses and uh, know that everything in your house belongs to Krishna. Nothing belongs to you. Your wife belongs to you or your husband belongs. At least your wife belongs to Krishna. Your husband belongs to Krishna. Your children belong to Krishna. Your home belongs to Krishna. You know, all the amenities in your home, all your assets belong to Krishna. So everything is Krishna's. What is yours? Nothing. You came here with nothing and you go with nothing. Right? So uh, we just have this few years left in this world and we need to make the best use of whatever we have whatever Krishna has provided for us in the in his service and always uh, be reminded of Krishna right and in this way we can release our attachments to this material world and go back home back to Godhead for because at the time of death Krishna says remember me right that um, whatever you remember at the time of death, you will you will you will become that, right? Uh, so we, we should actually give up all these things and think of Krishna, so we can think of Krishna at the time of death and go to Krishna, right? Instead of loitering in this material world, we don't want to be here anymore, right? We have taken up to this process of Krishna consciousness so that we can go back to Krishna and, you know, don't let um, things of this world um, take over your life. You have to control. You are the controller of this body, the controller of your senses, the controller of everything. You are the spirit soul, so you need to be um, situated with this, with the super soul, who is Krishna. So let's not um, become too entangled with hurt and home, and uh, become attached, become attached to Krishna, and go back to Krishna. So with that, I'll stop there. And if anyone would like to comment or you have any questions, you're most welcome to air them now. Hare Krishna. Anything? Any realizations you may have? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thanks for the wonderful class. Actually, that is very pertinent. In fact, um, I think you, you mentioned in, our, in your, your lecture, you know, Maya is very strong and can pounce on you at any time, you know, very unexpectedly. And I think um, maybe just a realization from, from my side that I actually experienced today, I was actually driving through town, um, well, obviously on, uh, during work time and I was in my lunch break. So I happened to have lunch prashad and I was very hungry and I just found a spot, you know, in a parking lot in town. And I just uh, you know, decided to, uh, yeah, to, to have my lunch prashad. And then mm -hmm. I had, you know, out of the blue completely, I mean, sorry, this may be a bit sensitive, to others, but I had a society girl just come to my car, you know, and knock, and I was like, you know, in the midst of eating, and she's like, you know, I was shocked, you know, that she approached, and then I was thinking, you know, I'm so grateful, you know, that uh, thinking I'm, I'm trying to be a Vaishnava, I'm trying to be Krishna conscious, number one, number two, if I didn't have any restraining senses, or I can see how easy it is to become derailed, you know, and yeah. uh, anyway, that experience just, you know, 
was a bit shocking for me that it, it's so open and you know so blatant now but mm-hmm. anyway as you said you know Maya can pass at any time and we have to be prepared so yeah yes yes thank you for sharing that Shalen very very apt yes so um so yes as I was saying Maya is very strong and at any moment she can just get us you know so we have to be always vigilant and you know, in our consciousness and think uh, before we act on anything. So, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Shalin, for that. Very nice. Anyone else? Denton? Shamin? You can unmute. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, no, nothing from our side. Um, sorry, we joined the class a bit late, and uh, I just enjoyed uh, listening to the lecture, and we were looking forward to it from this morning. And uh, yeah, Maya is very strong, and um, just keep reminding ourselves uh, to to step up, step out of Maya. And, and go back to, to Godhead. Uh, and um, it's, we, I, I find that, that I, I get the, the most peace when I go to the Gautula. <laughs> it sort of grounds me. And, um, you know, Maya is, is, is so strong that uh, you kind of, and, unless, you, unless you're focusing on your Krishna conscious, you can get led astray very, very easily. Um, so thank you for the wonderful class, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yes. So what will actually keep us in Krishna consciousness is chanting our rounds. You know, whether it's be four rounds or eight rounds or 12 rounds, or 16 rounds, but we should start somewhere and that will actually keep us Krishna conscious. So yeah, thank you so much for that, Denton. Uh, Shemaine, anything from you? Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you for the wonderful class. Um, I have a question. Mm-hmm. So if uh, we come to that, you know, to like a Brahmanical stage where we have deities and we're worshipping mm-hmm. deities and um, we get ill, okay? Mm-hmm. We know Prabhupada's health first. What happens um, if somebody is ill and they can't uh, worship the deities, the rest of the family is, you know, um, um, yeah, the rest of the family is not uh, following the four regulative principles or whatever the case might be. Yeah, so Krishna understands. So at that time, you put your deity to rest, right? Mm-hmm. And when you uh, get better again, then you can worship him again. So Krishna understands your predicament. So obviously, you know, he will excuse you for that time. Yeah. So Maji, uh, if they have to, if they get like very ill, you, okay, mm-hmm. and they feel like, you know, they, they cannot uh, continue with the deity worship, to mm-hmm. give the deities away or? Oh, you mean a long-term sickness? Yes. If it's a long-term sickness, then you can give your deity away to someone who can worship them. But if it's a short-term mm-hmm. sickness, then you can put them to rest. And then when you uh, you know, re- regain your health, then you can worship them again. But if it's a long-term uh, illness, then you, it's better to give them away. So they can be taken care of. Yeah. And then the rest of the family, like some people, like they want to keep the deities because they are waiting like for their families to, um, you know, uh, uh, giving them a chance uh, to serve. Is that correct? I mean, is that the right way? Is it bona fide? Um. Maybe I don't. I don't have specific answers for you. Maybe you can talk to someone 
who does okay. so maybe the okay. deity ministry or something you know okay. that can help you i have no idea mm -hmm. thank you so much mataji for nice class Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anything else? No, that will be all. Thank you. Paramatma Prabhu. thank you for the wonderful class. Really appreciate your dedication. I was just wondering, Mother, you were talking about book distribution. What are some mm -hmm. of the techniques you can use to convince people to, to take a book? And also what? what sort of and also which books you think they'll they'll appreciate more? Because there's, there's so many different types of books. Some look very mm -hmm. thick, but very expensive also. So how, yeah, how so do you... Whichever, whichever book you are distributing, you should know the content of that book, right? And preach accordingly. So, uh, you know, uh, and also you have to judge the person and see, you know, where this person is coming from. First, make small talk, you know, talk to the person. And, you know, you could ask him a few questions like, where are you from? What do you do? What's your occupation? And preach accordingly. You know, so uh, in this way, um, he will feel that, you know, that in one sense that you you have taken the time out to, to know about him, you know, if you ask him all these questions and then you present the book that, you know, just say if you've taken the Bhagavad Gita, you can talk, this is, you can say that the, this book is spoken by the Lord directly. And, you know, uh, no other scripture in the world basically has direct information from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But this is coming straight from the mouth of Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord. So in this way, you know, you can, and then you can tell him the content. You know, it's, a, it's a conversation between Arjuna and Krishna, his disciple. You know, and, and, in, and Arjuna asks different questions and Krishna presenting the answers. And these questions are about, you know, everyday life, you know, about, you know, how to live our lives. So in this way, Krishna is giving the information. And if you take this book, you know, you can make your life perfect. Something to that effect, you know. So every book, you know, will have a different um, way you preach to the person. Or if we cannot actually preach to them, then you can just ask them for a donation for a specific book and, you know, in that way, um, give them the book. Uh, if they give a don donation, you can give them a book. So there's many different ways that, you know, one. Uh, on Sunday, we'll be having a class on book distribution and we'll be... Um, I think some of the <clears throat> content or, or of the class will be sharing our realizations and how to distribute a book. So you can stay tuned for that. Okay. Thank you so much, Malaji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anything else, Nayana Gopi? Hare Krishna, Mataji, dear devotees. Thank you for a wonderful class today. Mataji, I don't actually have any realizations as yet, but what I want to let you know is that I'm constantly thinking of Krishna or Srimati Radharani Ma, or it recently the mother. But my mind is like always on the deities of Krishna most of the time, whilst like if I'm going in the car with my son anywhere at home or whatever I am doing, and I find it if I'm going to bed in the night, if my sleep breaks any time, the first thought that comes is Krishna. And I find myself having like a conversation with them in my heart. Now, am I not troubling them too much or like I'm not like bothering them too much because I honestly don't know what to do. Yeah, that's, that's very good, actually, to always be thinking of Krishna in that way, in his deity form. And, you know, uh, at the moment, I'm watching these series of the Krishna um, Ish, Ishoda, Dulal, something Krishna, about Krishna. And, uh, yeah, so at night, I'm also, like, you know, constantly thinking of the Lord. And sometimes I can't sleep because I'm thinking of Krishna. <laughs> so... Uh, so it happens, it happens, and uh, it's very good in one sense, you are, more, you are Krishna conscious, and it, uh, you're not troubling the Lord, because the Lord wants us to think of him 24-7, right? 
So in that way, you are not disturbing the Lord at, you know, at any time while you're chanting his names. And you know, people also, they criticize us. You only know just chant, 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 chant the whole day. Like, can't you do something else? I know this when, uh, you know, when your family members, especially, and they don't understand Krishna, they'll say, Krishna will get tired of you. You stop chanting his name now, you know? So in this way, uh, but the Lord wants us to, ch to chant his name and wants us to think of him always. So, so that's the goal of our lives is to think of Krishna. And just imagine you, if you're going, you know, you're going, um, uh, you're traveling, you're going to work, or you're going somewhere, and you meet with an accident and die. At least you're thinking of Krishna. So that's very important. And this is what this whole class was all about today, to think of Krishna constantly. And in whichever uh, ashram you're situated, always think of Krishna, right? And in this... Um, Verse and purport, you know, it talks about Grihastha life, Grihamedi life, actually, you know, that people don't think of the Lord, you know, and uh, ways and means how to think of Krishna, you know, is uh, via his deity form, by chanting the holy names, by constantly singing his glories, you know, in the form of uh, bhajans and kirtans. So these are some of the ways that we can remember Krishna. So you're very lucky in that sense that you're always thinking of Krishna. Okay, so just carry Thank on. You. All I can say is just carry on thinking of the Lord. Thank you, Mataji. Haribo. Krishna Haribo. Very nice. So we'll end with the short kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Prabhupada Vitae Gura Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Gura Hari Bo to go to Vaishnavrinda ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, go Premanande, Hari Hari Bo. Vanchakalpa Tarubhyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhyavicha, Patita Nampavini Bhyo, Vaishnavibhyo, Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna everyone.